Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Sacramento Jazz Education Foundation Big Day of Giving. My name is Micah Dugan. I'm a board member and active music educator in the area. And we're here with Bill Dendel, Tea Garden Jazz Camp Director for Breakfast, Banjos, and Bill, oh my. Mm -hmm. And oh my, indeed. Uh, yeah. So today we are going to uh, talk about all the wonderful programs the foundation provides that your donations go directly to sponsoring. And we also want to give a shout out to Justine Lopez, who is our behind the scenes social media person taking care of this. So thank you, Justine. And thank you, Bill, for being here so early in the morning. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the first thing I think we want to talk about is our early jazz education and getting people um, interested in music. And some of the first things we do are petting zoos. And so, Bill, can you talk about what the foundation has done for petting zoos in the past? Yes, I can. And, and what is a petting zoo? Uh, what is a petting zoo? Well, a petting zoo, you know, they, it's... Uh, like the San Diego Zoo, I grew up in San Diego. The petting zoo is a place where people can interact uh, in close proximity. With, you know, actually, talk talk to the animals, talk to them, <laughs> see what they do. Uh, a musical instrument petting zoo uh, is it's sort of the the first step in our uh, overarching education plan. Is that we want kids to be interested in playing music. Period. In general. There's, there's no, at this point, uh, particular focus on traditional jazz. Just we want to see that they get a chance to experience instruments. They can hold them, look at them. And with the help of some uh, people who know what they're doing, like music instructors like uh, Micah, you'd be a good candidate for a petting mm -hmm. zoo uh, guy. Uh, help them, you know, show them how a trumpet makes a sound. Teach them to buzz their lips, show them what the valves change them, you know, just experience the instruments. And uh, I've seen kids as, as little as two years old. I, my, I have a granddaughter who had a year and a half actually was able to make a note on a tuba. Yeah. I mean, that's as, it, it's pretty powerful, um, you know, being a part of petting zoos in the past uh, and being an elementary jazz educator and band instructor when a student makes that first sound on an instrument and you just see their eyes light up, um, it's, it's powerful. And uh, donations from uh, everybody kind of help, will help sponsor professional musicians to go out and have these petting zoos at uh, concerts and events. Um, right, as soon as we're finished with the pandemic and can actually gather in large numbers and uh, yes. be in the public and, and put different mouths on trumpets, they all get sanitized in between. <laughs> <laughs> yes, even in non-pandemic times, yes. Even in non-pandemic times. But uh, the issue there, the issue, the whole idea behind the Petting Zoo project is to expose kids to instruments so that they, they may be interested in them and may want to learn how to play music. The first step in learning jazz is learn to play music. Yeah. So, uh, and then I guess that would lead uh, kind of naturally into the uh, instrument match program. Yes, the instrument match program. Uh, this is uh, a great program that a lot of my kids have benefited from and was just started a few years ago, actually. Um, the foundation takes donated instruments and they refurbish them uh, using local and qualified repair technicians, get and them in money, working order. Money that Say we that again. Money that we get from the big day of giving is used to refurbish those instruments to make them useful and playable again. Uh, that That's costly. Musical instrument repair people. That's a good job, by the way. If you're looking for a career, that's not a bad one to do. <laughs> this so is I, true. But I just wanted to take the opportunity to say that when you give to the Sacramento Jazz Education Foundation, that's one of the important places that needs funding so that we can have all of the instruments in playable condition so that kids can have them to play. Yeah, and I wanna say a shout out to Hi Brandon for joining the stream this morning. Thank you for being here. He's a musician and educator as well, and it's it's an early hour for us musicians. 
um, to talk more about the instrument match program. So once we do refurbish those instruments, we match them up with students in need. So these, these instruments don't go to schools. Uh, they go to the actual students and they're theirs to keep uh, for the long haul. Uh, to my recent memory, I know one of my um, uh, former students, uh, Jonah, uh, got a banjo or maybe two even from the foundation. Um, a young saxophonist named Jonah got a saxophone through the foundation. And it's a simple application. Um, if we could kind of uh, have Justine direct us over to the uh, Sacramento Jazz Education Foundation uh, website, sacjeff.org. Uh, we can show you where you can kind of check out more information for the instrument match program, whether you want to donate an instrument or apply for an instrument. Okay, so that will show up any moment. Yes, it will. <laughs> there it is. Uh, yeah, so on this page, you can find there's a nice little button where you can figure out how to donate an instrument or if you want to request an instrument for a young student. And then whether it's big day of giving our big button uh, somewhere on this page or at the top right corner, there's a page for donors where you can even donate directly at any time throughout the year to the Sacramento Jazz Education Foundation. Oh, look at that up close. Yeah. And uh, one important distinction about the instrument match program is that it's not just instruments that are used for jazz. Um, I know we have violins, flutes, um, all sorts of instruments um, and just you know get, get those requests in and now that um, people are being vaccinated and our lead person, um, Leslie Barger is, um, vaccinated as well. We're starting to kick that program back off. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then let's see, do we have anybody else out there besides Brandon, uh, tuning in? Do we have any musical requests that maybe Bill could, uh, <laughs> play for a donation? Um, Maybe uh, fifty dollars for uh, a request, uh, but if it's Saints, it's a hundred dollars. That sounds familiar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Preservation Hall in New Orleans. Yes. When I went there, it was a request for a dollar, and the Saints was five dollars. That so yeah. $5. Well, in, in, in inflation, yes, inflation. And good morning, Pete. Uh, Pete uh, and Brandon are some of our. Um, wonderful uh, musicians and instructors that help out with a project we're going to be talking about later uh, today. Um, and they're both uh, graduates of the Trad Jazz Camp. <laughs> yes, which is another program we're going to talk about. Um, I pr think, pro 50 oh yeah, there we go, $50 for a musical request. Thank you, Justine. What if I can't play it? Do we have to give the money back? <laughs> <laughs> um, I then I think Half the money. Yeah, Sorry. half the money back. Yeah, I think probably the next thing we want to talk about for early education is uh, music lesson awards. Um, this is a wonderful program. Again, putting uh, that money directly into the students' benefit. Um, every year, the foundation uh, gives out about five to six thousand dollars in free music lessons, which is pretty powerful. And donations like yours uh, that can help us up that ante for um, have giving out more scholarships. Uh, currently, we give out $500 uh, to a student each year um, until we reach uh, that 6,000 or maybe more if we get more donations in. Uh, let's see what else. And um, you and can earmark your donation. If you want your donation to go to Music Lesson Awards, that's fine. If you want it to go to Jazz Camp, that's fine. Just uh, when you do donate, let them let us know. Yeah, we'll do what you want with your. We'll do what you want us to do with your yeah. money. And it's a really simple uh, process. It's uh, not based on ability at all. Um, it's just based on uh, an essay that you would fill out, and if you have a teacher recommendation. And our focus is on elementary students who have been playing at least a year uh, in a program, up to um, a sophomore in high school. So that way, students that are interested in music, but maybe they don't have the financial needs or don't know the benefits of having private music instruction. Uh, they can find out and and get better at their instrument. And it doesn't have to be about jazz. It's just about getting better at your instrument. 
Right. Yeah. Um, many, many uh, jazz musicians, fine, famous jazz musicians, old time jazz musicians, many of them, except for me, uh, mm -hmm. actually took a lot of music lessons. That's not true. I studied. But uh, mm -hmm. it, it, when you when you study musical instrument technique, it is separate from the study of how to play a particular style of music. It's about mastering your instrument so that you have the vocabulary and you have the skills that you can apply in any kind of music. Uh, you, I, I'm sure you've all heard of uh, players like Oscar Peterson, great jazz pianist, a very famous man. My uh, favorite. And he had, or Art, Art Tatum, if you want to go back further. Uh, a lot of the early jazz players were classically trained musicians. And uh, that's one of the reasons they were able to uh, excel in traditional jazz. It's just a, a different way of approaching music, but approaching your instrument is consistent. Yeah, that, that reminds me of, um, I, I don't know if I've ever confirmed the story, but maybe you can help Bill. If I remember right, Oscar Peterson, uh, classically trained pianist, and I believe he was in the Tchaikovsky competition when he was in his teens and he had made it to the quarterfinals, but then he got a call to play in like, I think it was maybe the Philadelphia jazz harmonic or some, uh, you know, jazz band in the US. And he left the quarterfinals to go do that because that's was his calling and that's what he wanted to do. Does that, does that sound familiar? Do you can confirm that? Uh, no, the Oscar Peterson story I know is, is not suitable for public consumption. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can tell I, me later. <laughs> I did No, I, I have heard that, and there there are there are a legion of stories uh, of of musicians who left the classical world uh, or who were booted out. You know, their parents caught them playing jazz and kicked them out of the house. That happened. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Lil Hardin Armstrong. Uh, her parents were not thrilled about her playing jazz. But uh, so don't be a parent like that. Music is music. I don't care what kind of music it is. Uh, be encouraging. If, if it's what somebody loves to do, you want them to do it. So, uh, oh, yeah. Rob and Allison. Rob and Allison, thank you for your donation. Yeah. Hey, do you know Rob, those, Bill? I do know those people. Rob is a banjo student of mine, and he takes vocal lessons from uh, my wife, Shelly Burns. So, Wonderful. I'm going to pop in here. Hello, everyone. I'm yeah. Justine Lopez. I'm behind the scenes. I'm behind the curtain. Uh, but Rob and Allison, uh, this is real-time donation. So they have donated $50. So, Bill, I think that is a request for you um, uh -oh. for sure. a uh, song. And Rob knows <laughs> many. So, Rob, just let us know, and uh, it'll be the first song I play today. Yeah. Make it, make it one I know. That, yeah. That makes it more effective. Yeah, please help, help us fill that time, uh, an hour on uh, live streaming for Bill and I. <laughs> it says Christmas banjos and Bill. So far, all we've gotten is Bill. There's been no oh my yet either. So there we go. Very limited. We need to expand our horizons a bit. Yeah. Well, we're waiting for that request to come in. Uh, Justine, can you share with us where we're at on our goal so far today? Yes, I can. Give me one moment, everyone. Uh, well, there was no specific, uh, I don't think they specified any song. So, Bill, I don't know if you want to just take it away to... or, yeah. Well, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I got, I've got one. I've got one that suits the occasion. Thank 
<laughs> Bravo, Bill. Uh, wow. Th thank you for that wonderful rendition of when you're smiling. And yeah, when you're giving. Yes, when you're giving. Oh, as I said, rendition. Yeah. Hey, look, uh, I made $11,576 already. Ooh, that was powerful part of the song. song. Yeah, powerful of the song. <laughs> All right. Um, and our goal, $25,000. I think we can do that. Yeah, we're almost halfway there. And it's not even 10 a.m. We still have so many hours to go. But the sooner we get to that goal, the better. Cool. Well, thank you, Rob and Allison. Oh, there's another $50 for a musical record. Oh, that's uh, an instruction. Instruction, yes. yes. We got it. It's a suggestion. That was yeah. Cool. So while we're waiting for those to come in, uh, let's move on to talk about some of the, uh, the other wonderful programs we have in the Jazz Education Foundation. There are so many. It's um, hopefully we can get through them all in an hour. So I think I think we can manage. <laughs> um, so I think the biggest thing, and this directly affected me uh, when I started teaching about uh, 12, 13 years ago, is curricular support for mm. teachers and students. And there's a lot of ways we have done that over the years. Uh, the first is the Trad Jazz Project. Um, this one affected me directly when I was just starting to teach and teaching elementary band. I had an amazing set of kids um, at a little uh, local school called Mission Avenue. And they just needed a challenge. And the San Juan Unified School District partnered with um, the Sacramento Jazz Education Foundation for this project. And they brought in clinicians, teachers, to help not only uh, the kids, but myself who was new to traditional jazz. Most directors and teachers, when they have any college uh, training or growing up, it's usually in the big band realm of things. And early New Orleans jazz is typically not in the curriculum. Um, but I soon fell, fell in love with the music and the style and my kids loved it as well. And they really blossomed and um, having an elementary jazz band was amazing. Uh, I remember yeah. that. I, I participated in that program with you. You did. They were wonderful. I, I think this is a good place to interject why we have any focus on traditional jazz. Uh, there are two things that you mentioned. One of them is that most uh, music educators do not have uh, a knowledge of that style of music because that's not what you, you get in, the, in a college or university program. Uh, Traditional jazz is usually just kind of brushed aside as the precursor to jazz or something that led to real jazz. Traditional jazz is real and it's, it's still going on. It's contemporary. There are people playing it and actually making money doing it. So it's, it's a viable form of music still. The thing that I think appeals to kids and is also useful for them is that uh, modern jazz or big band jazz is tied to looking at music, playing arrangements, and it's it requires a level of sophistication in your musical skills in order to make, so you can sound like what you're hearing on a recording. Traditional jazz is more accessible. You don't have to have brilliant technique to be able to play it well. Some of the, uh, I was a musician for about 40 years, that was my profession, until I grew up and, and moved on to a, something that would give me a retirement. Uh, but I, I, some of the most brilliant musicians I played with were not necessarily technically uh, exciting. They, they didn't have enormous virtuosity. What they had was an ability to convey the emotional content of what they were playing, which is easier to do with the songs that we play in the traditional jazz idiom. They, they are tied more closely to the more basic feelings. There's a, a lot of it is very happy. Sometimes it's sad, but I wouldn't call it introspective or uh, some of the other adjectives that I hear about modern jazz, uh, thought provoking, introspective, you know, it's not. It's fun to play mm -hmm. uh, and Later on, when we get to the jazz camp, I want to talk about how playing together in a little in a band like that, where you're not reading arrangements, where you're having to basically improvise your part and make it fit with everybody else's. 
there are a lot of benefits to that that are not uh, necessarily obvious on the surface. Mm -hmm. but we'll get to that later. Back to yeah. you, Mike. Yeah. Well, to follow up on what you just said about why uh, young students are drawn to this music is a lot of the basis is dance music. And so when people hear this music and play this music, they want to move, they want to dance. And so that's why it gets young kids excited. And I, and I've seen it firsthand and you have too, Bill, that it creates such a wonderful foundation for the students. Um, so many of my kids uh, that started at that school in Mission Avenue and throughout the years, you know, they got hooked into this kind of music and then they kept exploring and advancing on their instruments and and they eventually continued to middle school and then even to high school where a lot of them went to Rio Americano High School, which for anybody in the area knows they have a great jazz program. And the reason they were successful is because they had that early start and they got the hooks in deep. Uh, don't forget that Rio Americano High School is the home of the syncopating sea monkeys. Who oh, no, 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 that, that's River City High School. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I got I got confused. Real Americano yeah. is the is the jazz mecca in the Sacramento. Uh, and it took us a while to to uh, drag Real Americano into the trad jazz side of things, but once they uh, saw, and I want to thank you. Uh, oh, thank Devin. Hey, I, I hope that's Devin Cortan. We'll see. I bet it is Devin. <laughs> it must be, but. Uh, Craig Faniani was uh, the director of that program for years. And it it took us a while, but once he saw the benefits of, of, of helping people get started by playing traditional jazz, mm -hmm. he went in 100%. He's still working with us. We'll get to the uh, Lesson Bank program mm -hmm. later on, which he, he's involved in. He's a brilliant educator. And uh, yeah, a lot of the, the kids from that part of town Oh, you were in Carmichael. Yes, uh, Carmichael. They move, they move on to Rio Americano. Uh, other kids in Sacramento, some people actually will move so that they can go to River City High School, where the Syncopating Sea Monkeys program is, uh, which is uh, another trad jazz program. And that one's run by a, a former camper, a jazz camper, Felicia Weatherly. Yeah. We'll talk more about her later, but the syncopating sea monkeys are going to perform at noon. Is That's that correct. Time? And I'll be traveling over there and uh, be recording and streaming uh, them and interviewing some of the kids as well. Uh, um, so your donations, that goes directly into helping clinicians come out and work with the teachers and kids and not just local area educators. Uh, one of the great things about the foundation is um, throughout the year, uh, before pre-pandemic and hopefully post-pandemic is when we bring in guest artists from around the country. Um, we get them to come in and a few days early before the performance and work with the students and the teachers in in the schools. And so to have these professional musicians come in is just, it's amazing and life-changing for these kids. And Devin, thank you so much for uh, the kudos there. Um, since you did donate, you know, please, uh, if you have a request for Bill as a fellow banjoist, uh, please chime in on there on the chat. Uh, Devin actually plays banjo too. He's a wonderful jazz guitarist. Yes. But I, I convinced him to play some banjo too. I gave him one. Uh, then he eventually, he bought a good one. Yeah, <laughs> and we'll talk more about actually Devin later in one of our other programs because he's a contributor to the Lesson Bank. Um, but speaking of curriculum, there are a couple other projects uh, we do have. Um, while traditional jazz is important, there's a lot of other basic elements that go into it, such as ear training, theory, um, and basic musical knowledge. And so in addition to that, we also created Sacramento Jazz in the Schools, where we just brought out clinicians just to teach even just general jazz concepts and uh, help teachers and students in anything jazz, not even related to um, specifically to traditional jazz. Um, and then most recently, in response to the pandemic, uh, we started the Lesson Bank, um, which is online curriculum that students can access 24-7, anytime, um, short 10 minutes or less kind of videos. And I think, yeah, Justine's pulling it up here. And in fact, I think I see Devin's face there uh, on our playlist. So far, we have, um, in the year plus that we started this program, uh, we've got about 75 educational videos uh, ranging from 
ear training, uh, music theory, improvisation, uh, specific instrument techniques. Um, everything is ordered by playlist. And oh, hey, hey, there's Bill. I see he's got a wonderful series on beginning improvisation. It's about nine videos, I think now. That's correct. Yeah. And th and that is his series is great if you're just wanting to get in there. Uh, Bill and I share a lot of the same philosophies about teaching improvisation. And uh, for elementary or middle school students or somebody that's new, check those out. Uh, Craig Fagnani, who we mentioned earlier, uh, he has probably like 30 plus videos of just music theory. Well, he's got a going. lot of information and a lot of experience, a lot of years teaching. He knows music inside out. So that, that's a good series to go through. Once you've done the beginning improvisation series, then go on to, to Craig. And there are others yes. on there too. Go ahead. Yeah. Hello, Sarah Morrison. Ah. Do you, does her name recognize Bill? She's in Australia. Ooh, all the way from Australia. She's in Australia. She's an absolutely wonderful trumpet player. She's Anita Thomas's niece. Who's uh, one of our jazz camp faculty. Anita Thomas, a wonderful multi-instrumentalist. Uh, and her her uh, niece, Sarah, is as, as promising a trumpet player as you'd ever want to meet and a delightful person. And I'm hoping... <laughs> hoping that we'll get to see her this summer. We'll, we'll get to that later also. Hi, Sarah. Wonderful. All Richard. right, thank you, Richard. Thank you for your donation. Um, so speaking of more of donations, as we are producing this um, these series of videos, um, something as little as $150 sponsors the creation of um, one of these curriculum videos. And that goes into the paying the content creator and our team of video editors, such as Brandon Au, who was on here earlier, and Pete. Um, <laughs> uh -oh. kind of Brandon says, what kind of breakfast goes best with banjos? Yeah, well, I uh, I answered that yesterday in our meeting. Uh, it's Raisin Bran. That's We're right. Raisin our Bran. <laughs> Um, so please check out our uh, Lesson Bank uh, YouTube page. Uh, you can just type in Sack Jeff in YouTube, find our page, subscribe. We're going to be continuing to add content, and eventually we're going to be doing some more interactive uh, webinars um, and master classes. So by hitting that subscribe button, you're going to be notified of new videos and learn a lot more. Thank you, Judy, for your donation. I think I know what Judy that is. I know what Judy that is, and she has been working tirelessly for Trad Jazz for years. She's she's a mainstay around this town, and we thank yes. you. Yes, thank you, Judy. Um, um, the lesson bank. I want to I want to chime in on this just a little. Yeah, bit. because the the approach and Micah mentioned that we we have very similar ideas about approaching improvisation. Uh, the thing about more modern jazz. It's a, it's a kind of music that you can't just jump into. Trad jazz, the the first improvisation that you do can be very simple. And uh, Micah and I uh, do the same thing. We try to get people to understand that you can play other music, other notes, other than the melody, or you can simply take the melody and switch things around a little bit, change the rhythm add a few notes here or there, take some out. It, it's a very accessible way to understand improvisation. If you're listening to Charlie Parker on YouTube, trying to figure out how you get to that is, is a little overwhelming and intimidating. But if you're listening to uh, early, well, Louis Armstrong would be intimidating too, but uh, a lot of the players that play in traditional jazz, they're playing very melodically uh, their improvisation is not uh, as intellectual or as abstruse. There's the word for you, abstruse, as many modern or more modern players play. So it's it's a way to get your get your uh, feet wet, dip your toe in the pool, and you can swim carefully out toward the deep end rather than just being tossed in out there. Um, mm -hmm. And I would have pined about that for hours if someone let me, and today's not the day. We're halfway through this morning. We've got more programs to get to. Yeah, we do. 
And, and I just want to follow up quickly. One last thing for the lesson bank that we'll probably talk more about later when we visit uh, Felicia Weatherly at River City High School is that directors like herself have been able to use this content with their class is, as they've been virtual for most of the year. And so I know she's been a big fan of like your particular series and showing that with her kids while they were at home trying to learn their instruments. Um, so it's, it's a very powerful tool and the kids can access those at any time, which is great. And they can access them repeatedly. If you didn't yes. get it, you can rewind. You can go back and do it again uh, and, and extract more understanding. So it's a yeah. really powerful tool. And there's some great musicians involved in this. Uh, I mentioned Anita Thomas. She's done some videos. Mm -hmm. uh, who else? Well, and Craig Fagnani, Devin Cortan. Yeah, uh, uh, Andrew Stevens. Andrew Stevens, a former camper. Yeah, uh, Pete, who's on here with us today. Some wonderful what? drum uh, tutorial videos. Um, so yeah, please check it out. We have more, I uh, you know currently we have, uh, for any local people, um, Dine Everston at American River College. He's working on creating some trombone videos for us. So we can look forward to seeing some of those really soon as well. Um, Joe Mazzaferro, uh, wonderful trumpet player and educator and the San Joaquin Valley is also gonna be working on some stuff for us as well. Um, don't so forget Bria, Bria Skunberg, who is in uh, New York, a wonderful, wonderful musician, former mm -hmm. camper, former and, and on the staff actually at the camp. She's done some great videos also. Yes. She's lots there. Yeah. So don't forget your donations go directly helping sponsor videos, content, and continuing to build our bank or our vault, so to speak, of videos. So make a deposit to the Lesson Bank. Yeah, there you go. Make a deposit. <laughs> and later on, you can make as many withdrawals as you want. Yes. Um, so now the next program I think we want to talk about is your favorite. Jazz camp. I've heard of that. You've yeah. heard of it. Oh, that's good. I've heard of it, yeah. <laughs> so, Bill, t tell us about what the Tea Garden Jazz Camp is and what it is entail and how does it benefit the kids? Okay, I think we might have enough time left for this. Uh, <laughs> the Jazz Camp is a unique place. I've been involved in it since 1989. I've been the director since 1999. So it's it's an enormous part of my life. And it's an expression of a philosophy that many of us share, that the best learning environment, I was a teacher. I did not teach music. I was an English teacher. And I was an administrator. Uh, and my philosophy of education is has always been to start with what the student knows. At the camp, we do that. We get many absolute beginners, people who have never improvised a note, come to camp. And that's where they learn. And I, uh, I answer emails every year. People apply and they say, what should, my, what should my student be learning so that they're ready for camp? And you know, what, what can, how can they learn to improvise? I said, that's what they go to camp for. Uh, my opening day, opening first minute speech is that the camp is, by design, a supportive, non-judgmental uh, environment. It's a place where everybody recognizes that everyone is learning and we're all helping each other. It's, it's creating a, a cooperative, collaborative environment. And it works. We've been doing it for, you know, the camp actually began in 1986. And there are legions of fine musicians across the United States and around the world who experienced the jazz camp. And for many, it was their first time learning to improvise. When, when you're doing something, you know this, when you're doing something that's unfamiliar to you, it feels very dangerous. <laughs> There's people. That was me. Yes, it was yeah. me. Uh, when you're doing something brand new and something as uh, uh, putting yourself on the line as you are, when you're improvising, when you stand up and play a solo, everybody's listening to you. That's like being thrown on stage and told to make a speech when you weren't prepared to, or, or you don't know what you're going to talk about until just the last minute. 
And making that a safe place is the way to make it work. Uh, yeah. There is, of course, lots of instruction. There is music theory instruction, but it's minimal. It's what you need to know. Of course, when we get to the more advanced students, it's more complicated. It's more, uh, it's, it goes deeper. Uh, and and Bill, can I interject real quick? Yes, you can. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, so speaking of, you know, camp, when, when those kids start and going to camp, one of the most powerful things I've seen is when they go to camp, they don't leave until you have to pull them out uh, when they sort of age out. Like, doesn't matter how advanced they've gotten, uh, kids and students still flock to the camp because not only are they always learning something new, uh, because they're playing with new people all the time, they're working on that collaboration, but it's also just a fun camp. Uh, it actually and, feels, it feels like a family. Yeah, very much. And I think that's why people do flock back. And uh, while camp is probably one of the more affordable ones around at about $800 uh, for the week, um, you know, we still provide a lot of financial uh, aid to students with the help of donors like you all out there. Um, we give partial and full scholarships. About 35% of campers attend on partial or full scholarships. So your donations, like if you want to donate, you can earmark it. I want to sponsor a kid to camp. Um, and I think one of our donations that came in uh, earlier today of $10,000 went straight to just sponsoring 12 kids to go to camp. That's marvelous. Yeah. yeah you can, that, in fact, I, I'd like to reiterate that point. When, when you donate, you can earmark what that money is going to go for. Uh, we get uh, some of the donations that we get for camp that we appreciate are the ones that are just do whatever you need to do with it because there are a lot of costs associated with camp and the tuition does not cover it. So it's, it's something that the foundation has to supply. Uh, we have to rent buses to take kids up and back to camp. That's expensive. Uh, the cost of the camp has slowly risen. Uh, and we want to make we want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity that wants it. Uh, I noticed uh, on the music lesson award, there was uh, uh, you write an essay explaining why you want lessons or why you want an instrument. A lot of stuff uh, relies on that kind of application process. We do the same thing with camp. Uh, some we've had years where there were more applicants than we could take, and we. We ask the applicants to write an essay about why they want to do, why they want to be part of the program, what their interest is in trad jazz. And uh, if somebody wants to be there and is really interested in the music, we do not want any financial wall built between them and the, and the camp. We want them able to come. And that's one of the things that you can do with a, a donation to the Sacramento Jazz Education Foundation. You can make sure that kids get to, to go to camp. And I want to, uh, uh, one more thing about camp, and then I'm going to give it back to Micah. Mm -hmm. One of the things I tell the kids at camp every year, because they're all concerned. I mean, uh, public education is built around the concept of failure in many cases. You, you try to learn something, and if you don't succeed, you are judged as having failed. You get an F. Well, it doesn't happen at camp. I, I quote Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso said, I'm constantly doing things I don't know how to do. That's how I learned to do them. Mm -hmm. And we, we focus on that at the camp. You're, you're not going to be perfect. It, it takes years to become perfect. Yeah. If you ever get there at all. And constantly at camp, you have the opportunity to try things in a place where you won't be judged. So that's, uh, the benefits of that are well past music. Uh, and, and Bill, that reminds me of a uh, one of my favorite quotes is fail stands for first attempt in learning. First attempt in learning. In learning, yeah. First attempt in learning. Yeah, I was an English teacher. I caught yeah. you there. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, a camp is a great thing and your donations can go directly to helping kids learn about this wonderful program and all these programs if you want to revisit them uh check out sacjeff.org um 
and that will also take you to the Tea Garden Jazz page, which Justine just featured there uh, for the camp. And if you want to find out more information for your kids, spread the word. I think we're hopeful we get to have camp uh, this year. We're still in the fingers crossed mode. We're still in the fingers crossed mode, yeah. Uh, but it, it's a great camp. And uh, thank you, Bill, for doing it because so many of my former students have benefited greatly, whether they're pro pro professional musicians or not. They, it's a, it's the a great thing. You learn, the lessons you learn uh, at camp about how to interact with other people successfully and supportively, that's going to do you wonders of good no matter what. What mm -hmm. you do. Unless you're going to accounting, then. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so I think the next thing we want to talk about is the Tea Garden Jazz Festival. And we're going to enlist the help of Yvonne Ao um, uh, with a short little video. She couldn't be here with us this morning. Um, and while Justine is pulling up that video, this is a great one day festival that just emerges kids in early jazz. And it's one of my favorite days of the year because when my kids start playing jazz and we go to this festival, they know a little bit, but when they get to be immersed with it and hearing all the different bands and the high school and college musicians, which have, you know, more mastered this music, um, their eyes and ears just open up and they, they're just like sponges. They just take it all in. And there's usually about 30 youth bands. Oh, there she is. Uh, right before we start this video, um, one of the ways your donations can help is not only uh, flying in faculty from around the world to come in and work with the kids and be featured clinicians, but we award nearly $15,000 in scholarships. So we recognize you know, outstanding instrumentalists uh, from every group, uh, from every age level. Um, so that's a great way for your donations to affect students. So I guess we'll give it to Yvonne now and give Bill and I a three minute break. Greetings. I'm Yvonne Al, founder and coordinator of the Tea Garden Jazz Festival. SAC Jeff co-sponsors the festival with Sacramento State Jazz Studies. This traditional jazz festival provides a fun, educational and non-competitive experience for student bands. Participating bands range from elementary school to college. Most of our bands come from the Sierra Sacramento Valley with occasional ones from Utah, Southern Cal, Florida, and the East Coast. The festival's opening concert and workshop have featured such guest artists as Wycliffe Gordon, Jim Cullum, and Bria Skonberg. Panels of distinguished jazz educators and musicians evaluate 25 to 30 small ensembles and provide onstage feedback. The day concludes with an awards ceremony in Capistrano Hall on the Sac State campus. The TJF launched with a $10,000 grant from Seize Candies in 2005. Since its inception, Festival clinicians have awarded over $79,000 in music lesson awards, cash grants, and scholarships to the Tea Garden Jazz Camp, all donated by sponsors. Last year alone, festival awards reached over $13,000, which is four times the amount awarded 10 years ago. You can see the TJF needs your continued support so that scholarships could be offered on all jazz instruments. While there are fee waivers for a limited number of bands with financial need, we'd like to ensure that all interested bands could experience this festival. If you'd like to volunteer for the festival, please email me at yvonne at sacjeff.org. Donations of any amount are gratefully accepted any time of year through the SAC Jeff office. You may contact Executive Director Patty Jones at pjones at sacjeff.org or call 916-571-5533. Subscribe to the Tea Garden Jazz Festival YouTube channel to stay informed about the status of on-campus events for next year 
or asked to be added to the SAC GIF mailing list for updates. We'll keep our fingers crossed for February 12, 2022, when guest artist Bria Skonberg returns. We hope to see you then. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you, Yvonne, and thank you, Brandon um, Al, for recording that and uh, sending that to us this morning. Uh, we just have a few programs left to talk about um, to fill up our time here. I think the next one is TNT, the New Traditionalists. Um, this is the Sacramento Jazz Education Foundation's sponsored honor band that focuses on traditional jazz. So for those students who have really excelled and want to learn more about traditional jazz on their instruments, they can audition for this. And we have a wonderful, um, there's the page, uh, with an application. Uh, Bob Williams, who is a, an outstanding trombonist and has a sense of humor to go along with it. Um, he has uh, been directing the band for how many years, Bill? I'm going to say at least 10. At least 10 years. Um, and he's done a fabulous job and donations help uh, pay for his director's uh, fee so he can teach the kids. They meet about once a week. Um, they also go out and perform uh, quite regularly at uh, local venues, uh, festivals around California. I believe we're even sending uh, current and alumni students to the next uh, JEN conference in, is it Dallas? Oh, the Jazz Educators Network. Yeah, in Dallas. Yeah, 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 J yeah JEN in Dallas. And uh, other projects like uh, CDs, I, I should have got one here, but um, I helped uh, record a uh, professional uh, recording of them a couple years ago. And uh, your donations can go help sponsor future recordings as well. Uh, so check that out if you have any students that are interested in applying for it. Uh, anything to add to that, Bill? Uh, yes. Bob Williams is, is one of the great humans on the planet. And uh, kids having the opportunity to work with him is, is a real benefit. He's a great guy and uh, absolutely knows what he's doing in this context. Does a wonderful job with the band. Uh, it's, it's really fun, I think, for the kids... Uh, a lot of them meet and work together at the jazz camp. Most of the members of TNT are uh, alumni of the camp. And so they bring that same attitude with them to this band. And it's just, uh, it's wonderful to watch them really focus because at camp, you're with a band for a week. TNT, you can be in that for a, a year or two or three, depending on uh, your age when you start. So it's, it's an ongoing way, uh, and, and they get sounding pretty darn good. The, the last CD, uh, I was amazed at the quality of, of what they were able to do. They're, it's a really good program. It's been around. Uh, it started with the old Sacramento Traditional Jazz Society back in yes. the early 90s, I believe. Jason Warner was a member of the first TNT band, mm -hmm. our, our piano instructor at camp. He's a wonderful musician. Uh, yeah, money, it takes a little money, not a lot, but we need money for TNT. Uh, Patty Jones asked me to, uh, to talk about the fact that there have been some uh, anonymous donations made, and she wanted me to thank the anonymous donors. So we've seen a few names on the screen, not as many as we'd like, but we've seen a few names of people who have donated and we're very grateful to them. And we said thank you personally to Devin and to Rob and Allison and to Judy. Uh, who else? Did I miss somebody? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. But we want to say thank you to the, uh, the sponsors who have sponsored anonymously. That is an option if you want to do that. Uh, if you're allergic to being thanked, that's okay with us. We don't have a problem with it. But... Uh, Definitely want to thank uh, anonymous sponsors. Thank you so much. Uh, your money's going to a good cause. And now here's Micah Dugan with more information on yet another program. And yet another program. And uh, these next couple are kind of intertwined is that the foundation 
connects students with professional players. Um, so when we have local festivals, such as the Hot Jazz Jubilee, or in the past, the Sacramento Music Festival, um, or other events that we put on, we work on trying to connect kids as um, uh, apprentices with uh, professional musicians who serve as mentors, and they can perform right alongside the professional bands. Um, most of these musicians that come to these festivals, they want to see this music continue, and they welcome these outstanding kids with open arms, um, no matter what level, to come up and perform with them, and it's great. I remember at the last Hot Jazz Jubilee pre-pandemic, um, one of my elementary jazz vocalists um, uh, was heard by somebody and she got to go up and sing with the band and that just completely like changed her life um, and gave her the most confidence in the world and she absolutely loved it um, so you know my kids have directly benefited from that jazz uh, apprentice program and hopefully once uh, performances and festivals can get going that's a program we can continue to uh, do uh, anything else you want to add to that Bill that we've done in the past? Anytime you can hook up aspiring musicians with professionals, it, it's a really good thing to do. And there's so many opportunities through the Sacramento Jazz Education Foundation because on, in all of our programs, that's what's going on pretty much. Uh, with the lesson awards, you're working one-on-one -on -one with the teacher. Uh, at camp, you're interacting with the world-class faculty uh, all of them available all day, all night, it seems. Mm -hmm. And they're all really connected to the notion of establishing relationships. Sometimes people will go on and have lessons online with a, 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 an instructor who lives far away. Uh, so that building that relationship is really important. And it has led to employment. Uh, Rusty Styers taught at the jazz camp from 1986 till 2019, the last one we had. Uh, he's not going to be going doing camp anymore. I shouldn't say that, maybe, but, uh, <laughs> but he went to work. He went to work at Disneyland in a in a middle management position with music, and he's actually hired former jazz campers that he had kept in touch with and that he knew were still working on the music and actually got them employed at Disneyland. Uh, that, that's the kind of thing that can happen. Or uh, you, uh, someone has a band and they need a, a, a new clarinetist, they very often will look at uh, the people who've gone through the camp program through TNT. So there, there's a, a constant feedback loop with professional musicians uh, through all of these programs. So if you... Uh, we need some more donations. We're getting close to the end of this. Uh, so we do. I, didn't and, have and any, I know, uh, and we, we haven't had enough uh, banjo playing. We haven't had any uh, re requests. <laughs> um, while we're waiting for some more to come in, I want to talk about our next event coming up since we just have a few minutes left. Uh, I'll be traveling over to River City High School in West Sacramento. Felicia Weatherly is the director there, and she runs a fabulous jazz program. And all, all of these programs we've talked about, her kids have benefited from them. So you get, you're get you going to see firsthand what your donations can do and experience with these kids. So they're going to play about 45 minutes, and we'll, we'll kind of talk with the kids a little bit in between tunes about how they have been directly affected in a positive way by the foundation and all their programs. Excellent. Yeah. I absolutely agree. If Felicia, Felicia's inspiring. Ah, Justine was trying to jump in there. Oh, that? please jump in, Justine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Bill, I was just going to remind you, uh, for the last probably five minutes, um, I would just like you to play us play a song, Bill, uh, thanking some of our, of course, our anonymous donors, but also, again, thank you to uh, Judy, Richard, Devin. I'm going to name a lot of people here. Uh, some of these people donated during this hour, but also donated previously or early. So again, uh, Judy, Richard, Devin, Robert, Pamela, David, Mary, Suzanne, uh, and uh, Meredith, and Jeff, and Vicky. So uh, if you want to kind of combine 
everyone into one giant thank you song uh, for this hour. Uh, that'd be a great way to kind of end this out. So, uh, I mean, finish what you guys are about to say and uh, we can uh, end off uh, with Bill. Okay. I was playing We're in the Money. We're not. We need more. <laughs> thank you so much to, to everyone who has given. I really appreciate it. Micah, yeah. closing comments? Um, well, in addition to our noon uh, stream, also come back at four o'clock for sort of a, a happy hour performance with Andrew Stevens and Dexter Williams, who are former jazz campers as well. Um, and both have also um, continued on their playing and their teaching. They've also submitted stuff for the lesson banks. You can see some of their wonderful videos. I believe Dexter has a wonderful with walking with Dexter about how to create a walking base. And Andrew has several videos about improvisation and trumpet playing. Um, so they're going to be live. Say that again. They're both counselors at the jazz. Oh, yeah, that's right. They're counselors as well. And so they'll be live streaming a performance from 4 to 5 p.m. And Pete, one of our other um, jazz camp counselors and lesson bank contributors, he's going to be uh, there talking to them as well. So please check that out. Free concert. Uh, and please donate and keep those donations coming in. Um, yeah, there's the schedule. Thank you, Justine, for pulling that up. And so we hope to see you at 12, or at least I'll see you again at 12 for uh, some more live performances. And I think with that, Bill, we'll turn it over to you for a wonderful improvised thank you song. Okay, it's uh, not an improvised thank you song. It's okay. just a song. Uh, it's a, a song written by Lillian Harden, uh, Louis Armstrong's second wife, a wonderful pianist and composer a great musician, and she wrote a song called Once in a While. So I uh, I would like you to think once in a while of uh, sending a donation to the Sacramento Jazz Education Foundation so that we can help kids get involved in jazz. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Bill. Uh, and again, we just want to thank our donors um, for um, all their support. And I can speak firsthand of the impact it has on the students and educators uh, in the area and now around the world with the Lesson Bank. So don't forget, check us out at sacjeff.org to uh, do all those programs. Don't forget, you can use your Golden One uh, card and they will match any funds you donate today. So that's a great way to do some extra. We should have plugged that earlier. Yes. Yes, we should have. Uh, so we hope to see you at. 
Yes. Uh, so we hope to see you again at noon and 4 p.m. And thank you for tuning in, everybody. Uh, have a great day. And don't forget to donate.